let's study power i think in your earlier classes you might have studied power uh, power can be defined as rate of consumption of energy or we can also define power as rate of doing work how fast work is being done or how fast energy is being supplied it is decided by the power of the source or we can simply write power is a measure of how fast one can do work if someone is doing work at a faster rate we'll say its power is high if someone is doing work at a slower rate we simply call its power is low and when we talk about unit of power power is measured in terms of joule per second or it is also written as watt we just take up a simple example like say on a cliff someone is standing and holding a block of mass m at a depth h below the cliff and he start pulling the rope and say he is able to pull the block up to the top in a time t1 say he started pulling the block at t equals to 0 and by time t equals to t1 he will be able to lift the block to the top we can simply state the power associated with this agent on an average in this duration can be written as work done divided by the time taken this sometimes written as wt or it is written as p p is the most commonly used symbol which we use to denote power if we talk about work upon time this power can be written as mgh divided by t1 in the same manner if we talk about another person who is also pulling a block from the same depth on the side of a cliff but he pulls it at a faster rate he also started at t equal to 0 and he is able to lift the block in a time t2 where we say t2 is less than t1 in this situation also we can say the amount of work done is same but the time taken is less so power of this agent p can be written as mgh by t2 So if this agent is B, this agent is A, we can call this as power P A. This has power P B. Here as T two is less, this man has pulled the block at a faster rate or in a lesser time, so he has spent more energy in less time. We will simply say power of agent B is more than power of agent A. This is the way how we compare the power, and this power average work upon time. This is defined as average power. let's see about various ways to measure power for a process we can define power in two ways number 1 as average power and number 2 is instantaneous power if we just talk about average power average power can be simply defined as this is the symbol used to denote average power this is defined as total work done divided by time taken in a given process what are total work is done that divided by time taken we define as average power if say in a given time delta w work is done and if time taken as delta t average power can always be written as delta w by delta t as we have studied earlier that for a rigid body always if we talk about an isolated rigid body whatever work is done on it it is increasing its kinetic energy 
So when our work is done on a rigid body, it is used in increasing the kinetic energy of body. So for rigid bodies, average power can also be written as delta k by delta t, where delta k is the increase in kinetic energy. This we can also call as power received by a rigid body, or it is the amount of energy supplied to the rigid body per unit time. As we know, work can be positive or negative in the same manner. Power can also be positive or negative. Always remember this point that power associated with a force can be positive or negative. We always associate power with the force, force that of an external agent who is applying the force. Because the one who applies the force is supplying the energy during the process of work. So power is the work done per unit time. It can always be associated with the force and it can be positive or negative. And uh, this is because work is always positive as well as negative. We can simply state whenever we talk about positive power, this implies the supply of energy. And if we talk about negative power, negative power implies gain of energy. More precisely, power is energy per unit time to the supply of energy per second or this gain of energy per second. Units may be different if you are measuring per unit time. It is per second, it may be per minute, it may be per hour depending on the requirement of a problem. In this question, we are required to find the average power of gravity in motion of a projectile of mass m from a starting point O to the highest point of trajectory A as shown in the figure. In this situation, if we just talk about average power, we can simply state average power from point O to A can be simply written as work done by gravity divided by the time taken. As it goes from O to A, we know the maximum height attained by the projectile is h. So, mg is acting in downward direction and going from O to A, gravity will be doing negative work. So, the work done by gravity will be minus mgh divided by the time taken in reaching the maximum height can be directly written as u sin theta divided by g. And the height also we can substitute here. It will be minus mg square upon u sin theta multiplied by the maximum height attained can be written as u square sin square theta by 2g. So, when g gets cancelled out, when u sin theta will be cancelled out. So, here we can say the average power in going from O to A will be negative of half of mg u sin theta. That will be the answer to this problem. Let us see instantaneous power. As we know, instantaneous is always defined in the neighborhood of a second, in a particular time instant. We can simply state in a process of doing work, if for an elemental duration dt, Work done is dW, then for this instant, instantaneous power is defined as P is equals to dW by dt. If we talk about work done dW, if F vector is the force associated this implies dW we can write as F dot dx. If the force is producing a displacement dx, then in a time dt work done dW can be written as F dx. That means this power can be written as f dot dx by dt. 
here dx by dt we can simply write it as velocity of the body. So, it can be written as f dot v or in scalar form it can be written as f v cos theta that is the dot product of force and velocity. So, always remember instantaneous power can be given as the dot product of force and the velocity of body. In this situation if body is moving in the direction of force, force will be supporting we can simply say for supporting forces power is positive and if say force is opposite to the direction of velocity or it is opposing opposite the motion of body we can simply state for opposing forces power is negative. Here we are talking about instantaneous power. The magnitude can be given by the dot product of applied force and the velocity of body. This question says a body of mass m is thrown at an angle theta with the horizontal with initial velocity u. Find the instantaneous power developed by gravity as a function of time. Here if we just draw the physical situation here we can see on a coordinate system if we consider bodies thrown from the origin of this coordinate system with an initial speed u. Let us consider body is thrown at an angle theta it follows a projectile path and finally hit the ground at point A. During the motion the only force acting on it is that of gravity and at every point you can say gravitational force mg is acting on it in downward direction. So, the force of gravity here we can write it minus mg j cap at any instant of time t if it was started at t equal to 0 at any instant of time t the velocity of body v vector can be calculated in terms of the initial u vector as velocity vector in the motion of projectile at time t is this v vector can be written as u cos theta i cap because the horizontal component always remains same and it remain u cos theta. The initial vertical component of velocity is u sin theta which is retarded by gravitational acceleration g. So, after time t the velocity in y direction velocity in x direction as we have seen it is always u cos theta. In y direction it can be written as u sin theta minus g t j cap. If this is the velocity vector this is the force vector we can directly state instantaneous power p can be written as f dot v. Here if we just calculate the dot product of these two we can simply state j cap dot i cap will become 0. So, here we need to multiply the two coefficients of j cap that will be minus mg u sin theta plus mg square t. So, this is the instantaneous power of gravitational forces which is acting or which is supplied to the body during the motion of projectile. This will be the answer to this problem.